our ancient divey diner. Calico Kitchen is fun. Uh, this is a trailer park. Let's just drive through here real quick. Check it out. Thanks. Paradise had a handful of trailer parks kind of scattered around. Um, you know, a lot of folks kind of felt that Paradise didn't have much of a homeless population, but I think that's incorrect. Um, Paradise had a lot of, had a big population of folks who were, uh, what's the right word for it? Unstably housed, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of different mobile home parks or trailer parks um, or, you know, non-traditional housing. This was one of the many trailer parks in town. So we've been here for a half an hour, 45 minutes. Uh, is there anything that, that comes to mind that you might ought to, I mean, that you're thinking about questions or something that, I mean, with me, uh, Anthony brought up a good point about that. How are you gonna carry anything that you're given? Yeah. How are you gonna carry it? Well, you don't have a cart, you, you don't have anything. I mean, all these donations like over there, they're all good and everything for the immediate thing, but then tomorrow you're not gonna be able to carry nothing with you because you don't have a means to carry it. What do you think, Stan? I think you're right, absolutely. Because, uh, I mean, what are they gonna do with this stuff now? What are they gonna do with it? And now they're gonna complain because it's debris. Donations. Debris, exactly. Debris, yeah. garbage. We just yeah. uh, formed a, a union, Marysville Homeless Union. We got quite a few chapters through California and we're just trying to unite the, the poor people and the homeless people that that are just like us, uh, that are homeless, because we're homeless also. And we put this together uh, and we're just, well, trying to get the poor people to unite uh, as far as everybody, right? I mean, everybody's pretty poor now. They've lost their place one way or the other, whether it be fire, whether it be excavators, bulldozers. They're all pretty much in the same spot. They want to kind of categorize us. We're all homeless, so they need to immediately do something, I feel. I went now over to the fairgrounds in Marysville and uh, helped walk dogs, clean cages, get cages prepared for the animals that were coming in. And now I'm here in Chico, hoping I can do a little bit more. But it uh, looks like they're just running people out of here, and I don't think that's right. It's like, where are they really? Some of them don't even know where they're going. And it's sad, because it's like families, babies. I feel it's like terrible. you're a family every time yeah. we walk up to yeah. anyone. Yeah, every time I do, I do. I feel like yeah, you're a family, I because I can relate. I mean, we've yeah. been home, I've been homeless for 30 years, and so I got insight on what you gotta be prepared for. And some of these people, you can tell, obviously, have no clue about if it gets any worse than what it is after they have to leave here and go out with nothing to eat, no clothes, no shelter. That's a daily object right there. These people, some of them you can tell just haven't ever had to do that and they're scared to death. Being a veteran, homewood as I am and a homewoodette, <laughs> we, we've got some things that if we come across the right people, anybody I could tell to be prepared to stand in line if you have to wait for resources because the cities and the counties just either aren't set up, don't want to be set up, they just aren't 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 set up for anything of magnitude of this size. Here what's happened? And you know, uh, I, I can't help to say, you know, a lot of reasons why this has happened. I think has got to do with the timing of the Lord, the timing of the union, the Poor People's Campaign, everybody uniting together because the government in which we all live is not working. to know if there has been a separation between a new new homeless person from the fire and an existing hopeful. Yes, that's true. Um, they separated uh, a lot of well, the regular homeless into a separate camp in the parking lot. More, and even though, even 
if they were from paradise, mm -hmm. okay? Um, so, and honestly, paradise has done that to themselves too. They want to be separated from the regular homeless because they don't want the stereotype to be, they're homeless, sure. mm -hmm. all right? Well, how does homeless really happen? Mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, how, how do you become homeless? Well, you, you lose your job, you lose your money, you lose your house. Mm -hmm. Well, all these people have done that. They're, most of them that were working in paradise, there's over 300 shops gone. You know, well, if you had five employees at 300, mm -hmm. you do the math. It's not that hard. Yeah, right. They don't have any jobs. Their houses are burnt. They're now homeless. But they don't want to be considered homeless. Mm -hmm. I don't have any money. All right? No money, no house, no nothing. No job, no money, no house. Sure. It's just that simple. So... That's how you become homeless. Yeah. They're homeless, but they don't want to actually acknowledge, well, we're homeless. The stigmatism of homeless isn't about being an addict. It's about not having a livable wage so you can afford a livable house. That's the dilemma on homeless. That's, that's, that's the real beast, yeah, right. okay? It's about not having a livable wage and not having a livable house. That's it. I think the first thing that I wish everyone in America knew is that you can be homeless tomorrow. I don't care if you are a CEO. Like, my dad is a, a truck driver. He's been hauling rice in the valley for almost 30 years. Uh, bought his house with a check when he moved up here when I was a baby. Like, a very fiscally responsible man. Uh, my mom works most of my life. She just retired recently. And now they're homeless. You know, they did everything right according to the American story of being responsible and, and working hard and uh, being frugal and prudent. They've always lived within their means. I'm very proud of them for that. Like they've, they've taken all the right steps and now they're homeless and there's not an option for them. You know, anyone can be homeless tomorrow. You're, you're a, a wildfire away. You're a missed car payment away from, from not having a place to live. What I worry about with paradise in particular is that a lot of folks up there have had this narrative taught to them that homelessness is a personal choice or it's a, a personal failing, it's that you, you, you're insufficient to meet your own needs, you're lazy or whatever. And now that a lot of folks who have that ideology that they've been raised with, now they are homeless. I see that breaking one of two ways. First, it could be that there's this revelation that actually I didn't deserve to be homeless. Uh, a fire burned in my town or, you know, my parents got sick or, or my housing situation fell through for one reason or another. It's not everyone who's homeless deserves to be homeless or wants to be homeless. Uh, that's a simple fact. And I hope, I hope that this event allows Butte County and the surrounding regions to understand that fact. What I fear might happen from a mental health perspective is that this this narrative about homelessness is actually so deep in people that there's going to be a lot of shame that comes out of this about why have I, you know, it's been six months, I still don't have a place to live, why am I failing? Why am I not good enough to have a place to live? Have I not worked hard enough? Do I, am I not smart enough? Other people have houses, uh, I'm insufficient, uh, and that's, from a mental health perspective, that that creates a great amount of internal suffering. The first thing that I, I hope, I pray that people get away from this is that you can be homeless tomorrow. Like anyone, it can happen to anybody. A and that should inform the way that we deal with homelessness as a systemic problem. Paradise, what's left of it, we we'll talk about rebuilding. Uh, most people aren't gonna have that as an option because they're gonna have to go where they can find work and, and a place to sleep. So they're not going to stay in Butte County unless there's a change, an immediate change. The folks who are going to profit from this are wealthy land developers who buy up large portions of cheap property and develop it. This was already happening actually before the fire. One of the largest uh, shopping complexes in town was owned by a firm in New York City. Hmm. I don't even know if those, I assume that folks have, have even actually been to Paradise and know what it's like, but it's compared with you know, property rates in other parts of the country, it's, it's, uh, it's a vulnerable community already to start with, and now it's even more vulnerable to exploitation.
disgraceful to me. There's nobody here really to help them. They they take a, they take these donations, throw them in the ground, and leave. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at this. This is gonna be a lot of garbage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a lot of garbage. Mm -hmm. And what are they gonna do with it? You know, uh, I suggested. I don't know. Donated to the people who really need it down in the river bottoms. You know, there is homeless been around forever, mm -hmm. and they'll be around for a long mm -hmm. time. Well, they'll be around for a while, but we're determined to put an end to homelessness. Yeah, yeah we don't want to breed homelessness. <clears throat> That's right. No, we just want to educate it. Right, right. We want right. to educate the prior. We don't want to. We can't. It, it's hard to fix the that their response of, of trying to do it over time. We do need to fix it immediately, but we need to do like cancer. We can't cure it, but we can sure prevent it. Mm -hmm. From now on until then, as far as, as knowledge goes, you know, I mean, the more information we have and they have, the better odds we get if we can get the right data. Mm -hmm. If we mm -hmm. get the right data, we can just about figure out anything because nothing's infinite that I know of. Mm -hmm. Within the stars, <laughs> but uh, we should be able to figure something out given a, a finite number of people, agencies, organizations. We could come up with a solution. The immediate response, I, I put a system together and it's the homeless money direct. This is something that's direct. These people, uh, the agencies that are helping, they don't seem to understand what direct is. Direct is not two years from now. Direct is as direct as you got that money to give me. That's us. That's Give it to me and let's do that. Let's, let's put it out there one at a time. I'll do that and get you off the street. Then we have a little time to get a shower, get a good meal, and we can talk about what's going on. A large portion of the population in Paradise are elderly and retired. Um, it's also a very poor community. Paradise has a poverty rate of about 19% as far as I know, um, and there's a lot of chronic health issues. There's a lot of COPD, diabetes, um, there's, you know, drug use problems, um, schizophrenia, like mental health, physical health needs are, are rampant. There's going to be, you know, 25,000 folks who need to be housed now. Um, and bef before the fire, uh, Butte County already had a vacancy rate at about 1.5%, right? Um, so I think that works out to about 2,000 shelters, right? 2,000 to 3,000 shelters. Uh, so even before the fire happened, there's a, there a housing crisis in Chico, and there, it, it was recently just declared a, a housing crisis by Chico City Council. Um, we didn't have enough places for people be, to start before the fire happened. So now we have this huge influx of uh, elderly, poor, sick folks who need a place to stay. People could die, like this is life and death. This was already a tremendous problem to start with, um, and now it just got 10 times worse, in Butte County in particular. Um, and I know Poor People's Campaign and other advocates throughout the state have really been pushing the housing issue hard for a long time, and I'm now, I was grateful before, but now I'm personally grateful because my parents are gonna need a house. Oh my gosh, I so appreciate the fact that there are people that, that are rallying that, you know, others that they, that are understanding. Yeah, understand. so cool. Yeah, well, hey, thank you. What's your name? My name's Alex. Alex? Yeah, Hi, nice Brian. to meet you, Yeah, Brian. nice to meet you at Dancing with Prince. Hi, what was your name? That's Stan Stan. Next time. Hi, Stan. Nice yeah. to meet you. Yeah, these are members also. So Super we're here cool. just to help out with you guys and just to make sure everything's going the way that it needs to uh, and find out exactly if the system's working or if it ain't. Yeah, I mean, well, so yeah. I'm really glad. I'd really like to pick your brain. So kind of what I'm trying to do is encourage people and let them know, like, we're all human beings. We all deserve right. shelter. We all deserve food. We all deserve water. We have sure. natural medicine uh -huh. here. Uh -huh. You know, we, as human mm. beings, we all need this stuff. That's a, that's and, a, and they need yeah. to, like, know, I think that they're, they're just terrified and have such low self-worth and have all this going on that hey, it's like, <laughs> please, like, just let me hug you. I will put you in my you own are, vehicle and get you somewhere. <laughs> you are right. It's so what would it look like if you guys were to, I mean, I've been getting down and talking with people, you know, mm -hmm. like I said, everybody here is human. Everybody deserves to be in shelter and have food and water, water. and dignity exactly. and love. And there is nobody that is better than anybody. And at That's this right. point in time, it's like, okay, you guys are worried about some <laughs> some pork <laughs> sorters. Like, how about some shelter? Like, can yeah, we talk yeah, about the problem yeah. here? There still seems to be quite a huge segregation gap. Yeah, right. There, I mean, the 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 gap in between of of well, I'm only temporary homeless. Well, unfortunately, you know, and, and if that's the case, that's absolutely amazing. That's wonderful. But unfortunately, sometimes it takes a little longer than you expect to get back up on those on those feet. And and the we haven't quite seen the effects of that yet sure. because everybody's been so 
guarded by FEMA and helped out by FEMA. Is, I'm nervous to see what happens when they leave and that little crutch is gone. Mm -hmm. Because right now everybody's leaning on that crutch and I, I'm, it's going to be interesting to see how things change in sure. the next couple months. Sure. We got to think though that it wasn't just homeowners and renters that were in those fires. Mm -hmm. There's there's a large level of, of homeless themselves in paradise mm -hmm. that um, that's just an easier place to hide because the if there's not so many you know, it's it's not such a city oriented town. There's there's woods and people they camp. They literally camp. And we can't forget about them. Yeah, you know? Absolutely. They didn't have anything when they left, but they they lost what they did have and that, that means something too, you know. Yeah, yeah. I think that the union is going to be a in, uh, interesting but a helpful and a very helpful tool to get people to open their eyes I think I think people who haven't been represented are finally going to realize that they're worth being represented the the self-esteem and the level of 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 self-worth out here just diminishes diminishes like the like the degrees in the weather you yeah, know and and quickly and to have someone just to be there to say hey you know what I got your back yeah. mm -hmm. is it does tremendous things for someone's spirit and I think that that'll change a lot it's as long as we can get people not to just <laughs> crutch it I I just I'm 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 praying that that people will will embrace it instead of crutch it when I heard about Poor People's Campaign, for me it was like, this is the thing I've been waiting for my whole life. It's for somebody to say, up, come up and say, hey, this is morally wrong. We have failed our people. And that the poor are exploited. You know, because I saw it. I saw it in my clients. I saw it in my town. And I saw it, you know, in all these areas of my life that the rich get richer and the poor get poorer and it's an ancient story and it just felt like there's nothing to be done about it you know this is, that that was the status quo and that's the way it always been and then this happened it's like there's nothing left so but what i was talking with my parents about is that this is like the silver lining here is that the situation is dynamic now you know, they were saying that, my mom saying, you know, we liked our house, we loved our place, and I don't know where we're going to go now, but before, we were just going to live out the rest of our lives there and just kind of stagnate and wait, wait to die, you know, in our little plot of land. Which, you know, might have been nice, but now we have to change. You know, we can't continue living the way that we were, and it feels in a weird way hopeful that something new could happen and um, that change is possible now. And it could be bad, but it could be really good. So that's what I'm hopeful for. <laughs>